Hello and welcome to Back to the Science. I'm Dr. Susan Oliver and I'm a scientist and this is my assistant Cindy Oliver and she's a dog. Now I don't know about you guys but I'm feeling a bit of deja vu at the moment because earlier this year Dr. John Campbell made a video about some myocarditis data that was obviously wrong from Swindon that was obtained via a freedom of information request. He then issued a correction video when the data was updated, but he didn't immediately remove the video that he knew was disinformation and used a nudge, nudge, wink, wink approach to suggest that the updated information was suspect. Well, fast forward a few months and it has happened again. This time, the obviously wrong data concerned miscarriages in Lanarkshire. John presented the data uncritically, issued a correction video when it was made official that the data was wrong, but didn't remove the video with the wrong data and tried to nudge, nudge, wink, wink suggest that the correct data was suspect. Oh, and he also made some completely false claims about the risks of stillbirth. But first, let's look at his original miscarriage claim. Early pregnancy losses, miscarriage or ectopic pregnancies. Well, um, pretty stable in 18, 19 20 in the pandemic years, up a bit in 2021, but up really quite markedly in uh, 2022. And as we see, uh, double what it was in uh, 2018. Now, of course, that was the pandemic year there. Um, 2021, of course, we were vaccinating, 2022 we were vaccinating, but of course, and uh, this is the thing that's concerning me. Obviously, most of the babies that were born in 2022 uh, were conceived and were undergoing their fetal development in 2021. So quite what is the relationship with vaccination, if any? Now, I will get on to why this data was obviously wrong to anyone except a bloody idiot. But first, I would like to draw your attention to John's clumsy attempt to link the numbers to vaccination. He claims that most babies that were born in 2022 would have been conceived and undergone fetal development in 2021, which of course was when COVID vaccination commenced. Nudge, nudge, wink, wink. But the data relates to miscarriages, not births. So most of them wouldn't have been conceived and undergone fetal development in 2021. Now let's get on to why anyone but a total doofus would have realised that the original miscarriage information was wrong. To start with, if there really was such a massive increase, it would have been noticed before someone happened to submit a freedom of information request. But also the document contained two other pieces of information that made it obvious that the number was wrong. We can see that there was no substantial decrease in the number of live births and no increase in the attendance numbers for early pregnancy clinics. How could you have nearly 1,000 more miscarriages without a similar decrease in live births or a similar increase in attendances at early pregnancy clinics. It makes no sense. We should have made it obvious that there was a mistake. And if that wasn't enough, the person who requested the data from Lanarkshire also requested it from 30 other health districts. And guess what? None of the other districts showed the increase in miscarriages. But John chose not to show any of the other data. He just cherry-picked the obviously wrong data that fit his despicable agenda. But he has, of course, now issued a correction. Well, sort of. 
And here, here's the uh, corrected version. And we're delighted to see that the numbers are way down of early pregnancy losses. They had been alarmingly high, apparently. It appeared uh, that they had in actual fact pretty well doubled from 2018 up to 2065. But it now turns out that this is wrong. And this is now the correct number, 982. So in actual fact, we see that there's quite a big reduction uh, in uh, Lanarkshire area. Um, as we say, um, inconsistent with the rest of the United Kingdom, but very good news for the people of Lanarkshire. So do you like the way that Johns tries to suggest that the corrected numbers are actually incorrect by stating that they are inconsistent with the rest of the UK? This is, in fact, a lie. There is no evidence of an increase in miscarriages in the UK. As I previously mentioned, the person who requested the information from Lanarkshire also requested the same information from another 30 health districts. I won't go through the whole 30 with you because it could get a bit boring, but I will provide a link in the video's description in case you want to look at all the responses. Here's one example, though, from NHS Rampion. As you can see, the miscarriage data are entirely consistent with the Lanarkshire data, and it is also consistent for all the other districts that provided data. So, John is lying. Equally despicable. Even though John knows the data in his first video is wildly incorrect, at the time I'm recording this video, which is more than three days after John knew the information was incorrect, he hadn't removed it or placed any indication on the video that it was based on false data. He's continuing to profit from spreading misinformation that could result in the death of babies, unnecessary stress for expectant mothers, and the exacerbation of grief for those who have lost their babies. And for those of you who will inevitably claim that his videos aren't monetized, they are. This is a screenshot from a website that checks whether videos are monetized or not. And I will provide a link to it in the video's description. As you can see, the video is monetized and assuming an RPM of three US dollars per thousand views, which is average for YouTube. The video has made John 1,240 US dollars and 39 cents so far. Of course, the actual amount may be more or less, but regardless, spreading dangerous disinformation is quite profitable. Of course, my channel is also monetized, and you can see that my last video made about $11.16 US, which is even more in Australian dollars. And if I wanted to make more money, I could also start making videos with fake data supporting an anti-vax agenda. But I'm not going to. I would prefer to make less money and stick to the science. But John didn't just make despicable claims about miscarriages in his video. He also made claims about stillbirths and neonatal deaths. Uh, stillbirths, though. Um, so 2018, there was 14. 2019, there was 14. Went up in 2020, and that was somewhat increased in 2021 and 2022. Now, I, get, I know these are relatively small samples uh, sizes, but... Um, we are dealing with a limited uh, section of the country. But I think we are getting some statistically, statistically significant data from this. Let's look at neonatal deaths now. Um, here's neonatal uh, deaths up to 28 days. So six in 2018, six in 2019, five in 2020. But um, significantly increased. So it's more than doubled in, uh, well, yeah, pretty well doubled in 2021 and trebled in 2022. Now, of course, uh, important to realise that this was a pandemic year here. Uh, but, and they, uh, but this was before we started vaccinations. And then vaccinations were started uh, here uh, in these vaccinations applied in these two years. 
Again, the nudge, nudge, wink, wink suggestion that vaccination might be causing an increase. Well, for those of you who don't know, Lanarkshire is in Scotland and Scotland is one of the many countries that just so happens to have studied the effect of both SARS-CoV-2 infection and vaccination on stillbirth and neonatal mortality. And the study was published in Nature Medicine. And this figure here shows the results. Extended perinatal mortality is combined stillbirth and neonatal mortality. The background rate is 5.6 per 1,000 births. And the rate is the same for those who didn't have a confirmed SARS-CoV-2 infection. For those who did have a SARS-CoV-2 infection in pregnancy, it increased to 8 per 1,000. And in those who had a SARS-CoV-2 infection within 28 days of birth, the rate was 22.6 per 1,000. For those who got vaccinated, there was no increase. It was actually slightly lower than the base rate at 4.3 per 1,000, but the decrease wasn't statistically significant. So vaccines are not associated with perinatal mortality, but COVID is. The exact opposite of what John is trying to suggest. And they also did a similar analysis for preterm births and saw a similar pattern. John then goes on in the video to show data from various countries, starting with England and Wales. Moving on to the Office for National Statistics. Stillbirths and miscarriages in the UK, 2022. Another Freedom of Information request. Um, why all this information has to be got out by Freedom of Information requests? I don't know, but it often has. Now, this is answered by the Office of National Statistics. Mortality statistics from England and Wales is their data source. And we see that in 2021, there was 5,000, sorry, 2,597 stillbirths in the, in the England and Wales in 2021. And this increased... Uh, this was an increase of 226 from 2020. And I worked that out as about an 8.7% increase, which have, in my view is massive. Now, this is for all of England and Wales. So I don't believe this can be a statistical artefact. We can say that between uh, 2020 and 2021, there was an 8.7% increase in stillbirths in England and Wales. Why isn't this all over mainstream media? Okay. Firstly, John's claim that a freedom of information request was necessary to get this information is just more bollocks from him. The information was already publicly available before the freedom of information request in November 2022. Here is one of the outlets that covered the story when the information was released in August 2022. And it just so happens that the UK HSA have also done an analysis of the stillbirth rate by vaccination status as part of their vaccination surveillance report from week 31. Let's have a look at the results. The blue bar here shows the stillbirth rate amongst those who had one or more doses of vaccine in pregnancy. The orange bar is no doses and the grey bar is everyone. As you can see, the rate is slightly lower amongst those who had one or more doses, but it is not statistically significant. So more proof that vaccines are not behind the increase in the stillbirth rate. Australia is next. Now, what about other countries? Let's look at Australia, the latest from Australia, for example, here. Um, this is from Australia. Um, stillbirths. Um, now, it's up a little bit in 2020, but I don't really think that's a significant because of a graph I'll show you in a minute. But the data only goes up to 2020. 
So Australia, pretty tardy as uh, well. Um, and this is also from Australia, um, stillbirths from 28 weeks uh, gestation. And again, we see that the trend has been going down from 2002 to 2020, thankfully, due to better healthcare provision. Um, and of course, there wasn't a lot of pandemic in Australia in 2020 and they weren't vaccinating. So that's pretty well a normal kind of trend there. Yes, Australia has been a bit tardy in releasing the top line figures, but they haven't been tardy in analysing the data. This study looked at the effect of vaccination on stillbirth and preterm birth rate in 12 public hospitals in Melbourne, which is a city in Australia, from July 2021 to March 2022. Before we look at the results, some background. The top figure shows the percentage of births to women who were vaccinated by week. And by the end of the study period, this was about 85%. This probably sounds high, but it was significantly lower than the rate in the general population, which was in the high 90s. And they are defining vaccinated as at least one dose. Also, by the end of the study period, 13% of births were to women who had been infected during their pregnancy. And now for the results. These are the stillbirths. The blue line is the unvaccinated. The grey line is the vaccinated and the shaded areas are 95% confidence intervals. As you can clearly see, there is a substantially higher incidence of stillbirths in the unvaccinated and the adjusted hazard ratio is 0.17. And we see the same pattern with preterm births. In this case, the adjusted hazard ratio is 0.54. Next to the USA. The United States is slightly different. Now, the United States, of course, now um, I've blown these up a bit, but that's 2020 there. So that line there is 2020. And uh, that line there is 20, uh, 2015. To give you an idea of the scale now. 2020 was a pandemic year and we do see a slight increase but not a significant one there um so i i think that is telling us that in of course 2020 covid was running rampant through the united states but apparently not causing more um more mi mi mis no, more stillbirths in the united states so from this data and of course this is for all of the united states it's looking like COVID did not cause an increase in stillbirths, which is remarkably good news. Well, it would be remarkably good news if it was true, but it isn't true. And it's hard to believe that John is so incompetent that he doesn't know this. You can't determine whether an increase is significant or not by eyeballing a graph that doesn't even include confidence intervals. And to make a claim that the graph shows that COVID doesn't have an effect on stillbirth rate is grossly irresponsible. John is spreading disinformation that could result in parents losing their babies. It just so happens that the effect of COVID on stillbirth rates has been studied in the USA by scientists who, unlike John, actually know how to assess data. And consistent with many other studies, they found that there was a significantly increased risk of stillbirth amongst women who got COVID while pregnant. And the adjusted relative risk was 1.9, which is nearly double the risk. I regret to advise that I am unable to provide you with details of COVID-19 vaccination status for 2021 and 2022, as this information is not centrally recorded. Now, we were promised full post-marketing surveillance on COVID vaccinations. And I would have thought that would include early life and reproductive data. Well, silly me, eh? Because it's not recorded, at least in Lancashire. Now, if, is it recorded in other parts of the country? Well, if it is, it's not released yet. I would have thought this was absolutely fundamental to post-marketing surveillance of any new drug. Totally 
fundamental, but it appears it's not done. Yes, silly John. They didn't say the information wasn't recorded. They said it wasn't centrally recorded. Big difference. The information is, of course, available and is a subject of many studies, some of which I have covered in this video. There are many more studies, however. Dr. Vicky Mayle, who is a senior lecturer in reproductive immunology at Imperial College London, has put together a Google document that summarises the findings on the safety of COVID-19 vaccination in pregnancy from 36 studies in nine countries on at least 364,068 people vaccinated in pregnancy. The studies consistently show that COVID vaccination has no negative effect on miscarriage, stillbirth or neonatal death. And I'll provide a link to the document so you can look at all the studies if you like. Basically, John is lying. And it also appears he has some delusions of grandeur. And the Lanarkshire information releases appeared to get it wrong. I just noticed after the, my video. And the Swindon data releases, early release was, first release was wrong. Again, they just seem to happen to notice after my video. But it could be complete coincidence. Um, but there you go. Two coincidences and one error on uh, my part. No, they didn't just happen to notice after John's video. They had already received an email from the person who originally requested the information asking if they had made a mistake before John even made his video. And by the way, this email, which you can see here, was on the FOI website. So John really should have seen it before he made his first video if he was doing any due diligence. So, in summary, John not only presented obviously false data about miscarriages, he also lied about the effect of COVID on stillbirth rates, falsely claiming there was no effect. Not only could this false information lead to more parents losing their babies, but it could also cause unnecessary distress to people who have previously lost babies because those who don't realise that he is a lying grifter could believe his disgusting innuendos about the vaccine. And at the time that I am recording this video, he hasn't removed the video that contains the false information. If you'd like to look further into the data I've presented, I've provided links in the video's description. And please remember, this video is about the science, but you shouldn't take it as medical advice. For that, you should speak to your medical practitioner. If you've got this far, thank you for listening. And if you've liked, shared or commented on the video, double thank you because that helps the algorithm and means that more people will see the video. And of course, thank you to everyone who has bought me a coffee or little Cindy here who hasn't contributed a lot to this video, a treat. We really appreciate your support. We will be continuing to make videos about the science in the future. So if you'd like to see them, please hit the subscribe button. Thank you.